Good morning, guys. Uh, this is Jerry here today. I uh, am taking Joy's place here on this Saturday because she's come down with a little bit of laryngitis and she's having a little difficulty talking. And so you know how much Joy likes to talk, so <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's going to be difficult for her to do this. So I just told her I would do this today. But anyway, today uh, we're, uh, our scripture comes out of Luke uh, 11, 13. And I'll read this to you. Uh, if you then know, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? That's truly probably the most valuable gift other than eternal life that God can give to us here on earth who worship Him and trust in Him and everything. The Holy Spirit is something that He gave to us when He was transcended into heaven after His stay on earth. And to me personally, it's been a valuable, valuable gift to me and it is to every other Christian too because the Holy Spirit is your uh, answer to almost everything in your life because He guides you, He directs you, as long as you're paying attention. And as long as you are truly a child of God, you have received the Holy Spirit. And all you have to do is actually ask God to give it to you. I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that's just receiving the Holy Spirit within you, yourself. And then He will guide you and direct you and uh, hopefully you follow his instruction because if you don't, and I've been guilty of this myself, if you don't follow his instruction, I can tell you that bad things begin to happen. And uh, as long as you follow his direction and listen to him, uh, your life will be a much smoother life, full of abundance and a lot of other things that you wish and hope for because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within you and you paying attention to what He has to say to you and learning to obey the Holy Spirit. And like I said, that's probably the most valuable gift that Jesus left here when He did leave this earth and go back up into heaven. I'm going to read the uh, little synopsis here of what's in your book. Jesus had just taught his followers the Lord's Prayer, a model for how to pray. Now he impresses upon them how very much God wishes to give them good gifts. The Holy Spirit is God's presence living in their hearts, guiding, blessing, and praying for them. The Holy Spirit was promised to God's people way back in the Old Testament. The Spirit is an amazing gift to you. He lives in your heart so that God's guidance is always with you. Jesus clearly considered the Holy Spirit to be a very special gift and a grand example of God's true love for his children. Then there's a verse out of Galatians 5, 24, 25 here. It's down at the bottom of the page in your little book here. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And that is so true, because as long as you live in step with the Spirit, you, will, you still will have some tribulations in this life, but you will overcome every one of them. Because God promises that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. And that is through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I had a phone call this morning from my brother who's having some issues with addiction. And we talked in some detail about the Holy Spirit and how it was so important for him to receive the Holy Spirit. First of all, to be, receive his salvation because he has not been saved yet. And I've gone over that with him several, several times in the past few years, but he's finally now coming around it's been a while, it's been slow, but he's coming around and he's becoming more receptive to what I've been trying to teach him for all these years. And 
it's difficult for someone who's never been raised. But my brother was raised when my family, my mother and father divorced before my brother was very old. So he wasn't really brought up in the Christian church and so forth like we were when we were younger children. So it's a difficult time for him to understand some of this stuff, but it's like I've said so many times, uh, you just have to start somewhere, and the best place to start is, first of all, receive your salvation. The second thing, once you do that, is to receive the Holy Spirit, because honestly, without the Holy Spirit within you and the power that is available to you through the Holy Spirit, you're somewhat fighting a losing battle with Satan because you don't have the power to overcome him. And there's uh, scriptures in the Word that teach you that about how to receive the Holy Spirit and then to how to exercise the power of the Holy Spirit. Because, and I don't think many Christians realize this, how much immense power they actually possessed and that power is released through confession of God's word through your mouth. Mm -hmm. I don't think people honestly realize the importance of that because it's such a simple thing, but it's not as simple as you might think because your whole life can be transformed in either a perfect situation or a terrible situation, depending on what comes out of your mouth, your confession, you know, and to exercise the power of the Holy Spirit within you just requires confession of God's Word through His Holy Spirit, which endues you with the power. But that power comes through confession of God's Word through your mouth. And it seems like such a simple thing, but when you stop and think about it, uh, when you go back to the uh, scripture about faith without works is dead, you know, uh, the works of faith Faith basically can be a lot of different things depending on what you're believing in, but in some instances, the only uh, works that you can perform, such as in healing, is the confession of God's word out of your mouth. And without that, you're not going to be healed. So I'm just, and that involves a whole other situation, but I'm just saying, and I was talking to him this morning about that. He has horrible confession out of his mouth. He's been confessing the bad things for years and years and years. And I'm finally getting to understand, little by little, how the confessions out of his mouth are destroying his life. So anyway, enough of that. But I'm just saying that the Holy Spirit is probably the most important thing God could have given us. And uh, All you have to do is ask. All you have, yes, all you have to do is ask. And... He'll come into your life, he'll come into your body, he'll come into your mind, he'll come into your soul, and basically guide you in the right direction in your entire life, and that's through your conscience, okay? Yeah. And you exercise that power that goes on in your conscience through confession of God's word out of your mouth. And that's how it all takes place. I mean, everything. Because in the word it says, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. But that all requires you to do something first. And receiving the Holy Spirit and then doing that is where you gain the value of that. Anyway, I preached enough today. <laughs> I uh, will let you all go. And uh, uh, today is Saturday. I'll see you all again tomorrow. Have a great day.